Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. If everybody knows me, my name is Kay and I have been a journalist for quite a few years now, enjoying video games in every sense of the word. <laughs> and I have the incredible honour today of sitting down with a wonderful, wonderful actor, most known for his role as Bill Williamson in Red Dead Redemption. So grab a coffee, sit back and relax, and this is my conversation with Steve J. Palmer. Enjoy. Okay, so what I'm doing here is just getting to know a bit more about you and your role, obviously, as Bill Williamson. Um, just wondering, how are things for you right now? Like, not just in the state of the world, like the pandemic, but just in general, how are things? Um, how are things? Wow. Um, I, I mean, things are, things are gen generally uh, good, Kay, uh, and I appreciate you asking. I hope things are, are good for you as well. Um, it's, it's, uh, I, I feel, uh, I, I feel positive. I feel hopeful, uh, being here in the United States, we are, uh, into a dawn of new leadership. Um, and hopefully that's going to, um, uh, I, I'm looking for, a, a, a positive outlook in this. I know it's, it's, it's going to take time. It's going to take time. Um, I feel though, uh, I've, I've been fortunate, uh, uh, both my, my parents have gotten their first round of vaccinations here in the, uh, here, we're here in Northern Florida. And, uh, uh, I don't, uh, I'm not, I'm still doing everything that I can, uh, as far as wearing a mask everywhere and, and, and trying to limit my exposure, uh, but taking, uh, uh, my sister lives down the road here with her family and our job is to make sure my parents got vaccinated. Uh, so they're doing okay. They're being healthy. And, uh, um, I, I, I would have to say that right now that's on my, uh, th that's in the front of my mind. Um, this mm -hmm. has been challenging. This has really been challenging. This is, um, this has been painful for me in a lot of ways uh as far as just uh dealing with the the fear of of COVID-19 I came out here I packed up I packed up my car and I I left my residence in LA at 11 a.m the uh, Tuesday morning July 7th so just just wow. right after 4th of July weekend not that I did anything I watched I stayed in I yeah. stayed in that's what you do and it's uh, still what LA is about. Um, but I, I, I had the opportunity, my family reached out and said, why don't you, uh, I mean, basically nothing was really going on. My industry was pretty much shut down. So they're like, come and join us. It was my parents, uh, 50th wedding anniversary in two weeks. We were supposed to have a big, uh, uh, we were supposed to go to Quebec city where they spent their, uh, honeymoon. And then we were going to go to Maine originally for a big family reunion because my dad's from uh, Brewer, uh, Maine. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't get to do all that, but they still wanted me there. And, and uh, so what I, and it wasn't, it wasn't something spontaneous. We planned it out. Um, I, I took uh, I, three days, two nights. I drove cross country as quick as I could. Uh, I got uh, to here. Uh, I'm in my dad's office, so uh, and he's been so generous. And all, and all the events I've been doing, the Zoom meetings, the Streamly's, my dad uh, is a retired. Uh, uh, he worked with Lockheed Martin. He was a def uh, retired defense contractor. So the fact oh, that nice. he's letting me use his office is a <laughs> big deal. Uh, and and I have to thank uh, my dad for that. Uh, so. Um, I, I got here and there's, uh, I was quarantined away from my family for almost close to two weeks. I didn't come in contact with them. They made food, they left it down there. Uh, and I stayed quarantined until I could get tested here, uh, mm -hmm. here in town. I got tested, came out negative. I was integrated into their uh, bubble, which is the way it should be done. And that's how it's been for, uh, yes. so I've been here six months. Uh, and I've got, I've got, uh, I've got someone, um, 
looking after my place. I've uh, got my mail forwarded here and I've been existing in this, in this chamber of limbo, but I've been with family making sure, you know, people, people who are still in Los Angeles or in a big city like Chicago, New York, they're away from their family and they wonder they can do the FaceTime, they can do the Zoom, they can call, they can email, they can text. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you're able to be there safely and you can see firsthand that your loved ones are safe, I, I, I've, I've been very fortunate as much as this is, uh, um, been extremely stressful, been extremely stressful. I had a fan just went up. I was doing my Stringley event and someone had pointed out, they're like, how much you weigh? You look like you pull weight on. And I was like, who? Would? Yeah, I did. I did. You know what? I did. We all did. We all did. And I was, <laughs> there was part of me that was tweaked, but then I'm laughing. Cause it's like, we can only be honest. There's nothing to hide. We've all, all been body slammed. I think, yeah. And, and so I was like, yeah, I did. I did. I'm going to, I'm going to take it off, but I did. You got me. You got me. And so <laughs> I'm laughing, but it's just kind of, I mean, that's just, we. so much has been, so much has been stripped down into this. Mm-hmm. And it kind of way, it's like a pleasant rawness. It's just like, there's, it's like, yeah, here, here, here we are. <laughs> this is us. This is what's happened. Um, and it's, it's stressful as hell. It's stress mm-hmm. it, 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 here in the U S it's stressful. And to say that it, it, you, some people might be, might be finding success in a, in a, in a niche or something or doing well. And I would not it, it's like more power to you, yeah. more power to you. Um, but I've, I, I look at the whole thing and, and, uh, I have to look at the whole picture and I am reminded how fortunate I am that I still have my, my parents, they're, they're older, they're seniors, they're in good health. They, they, you know, we live off their houses off by the woods. So we're kind of away from stuff. They can go walking and not run into anyone other than deer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, the fact that I've gotten to spend this time with family and I've got to, uh, so I, I was here for their 50th wedding anniversary. I was, I was here for my niece's 10th birthday. I was here for uh, Halloween. I was here for Christmas and New Year's. And not that we did anything extravagant, but I just, I was here and I've had friends remind me, they said, you know what? Um, I, I've had friends that have just been uh, staying in LA and they're actually on set, they're booking work. Wow. But they're also say I don't, and I'm like I, I haven't I haven't worked uh, since the beginning of the year, and I'm kind of you know, and, I, and they're like you know what though you you get to spend time with your parents, and so many friends say only I only have one of two parents or both my parents have passed, and the and I would trade anything to do what you're doing. Mm. So I have to look at the blessing of what 2020 did offer me, is more mm-hmm. time with my family who I cherish more than anything. Uh, uh, as much as, as much as we, uh, can drive each other nuts, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with American television, but I could, I could compact, uh, the highlights of a week in my family. And it's like an episode of everybody loves Raymond. <laughs> and so I, I, it's, it's, if people want to like, want to know why I got in entertainment, it's like, if you met my family, you'd be like, ah, oh, that's, that makes sense. Uh, but if, if that ans- answers your question, Kate, it's, I, you know, I, I stress out like everyone, everyone is dealing with the same thing. We're all dealing with COVID. Some of our, some of our, we live in areas that are handling some things better, some not, Yeah. but it's not, it's not that this is only happening to these handful of people and everyone else gets to go on with their lives. This is, this is impacted the entire planet. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is this is uh this is one of those events where if you are one of the younger generations if you're like right now if you're between the ages of like eight and 16 uh your i think your generation will be defined look is is how you saw the adults around you handle this catastrophe um uh some adults didn't handle it well uh some adults did some adults handled it poorly at first. They learned, they got better, 
without too much cost to someone else. I mean, this is, this is going to define generations, what, we, what we're going through, but yeah. uh, my, my, you know, my burdens are no, are no different or, or, or greater or lesser than anyone else's. I, I would have to say that uh, like, like anyone I had challenges, but um, I was blessed to, to be able to be around my family. And I would say that I really got to connect with, uh, with my Red Dead fans. And that means the world to me because uh, a lot of them have reached out to me saying, you know, you, you, what you, the bond that the cast has together and how you treat your fans, it, you know, it means the world to me, it means the world to my sister. She's a fan too, or what have you. Um, and and, and I, I will certainly just speak for myself, but I think I speak for the entire cast. I, I'm sure I do is that we adore our fans and they've been a strength for us too. They've, they've been affectionate. Um, most of the Red Dead fans are, are kind. Um, they're artistic. The fan art we've been getting has been amazing. And it makes us happy. It's just like we, we made something that is helping people get there. I mean, I, the, more people had time to play both Red Dead games in 2020 <laughs> than they had. And, and that can be a good or bad thing. It's like, oh my gosh, well, you know, Zubo's like, well, I'd rather be going back to work. But since I'm not, you know, and they, they're like, <laughs> off to Valentine I go. So it's like, hey, I'm glad we could contribute. And, and, and uh, we made a lot of people happy in this time who needed some form of escapism. Mm -hmm. And everyone tells me this about the game. They're like, you know what? <clears throat> I, I live in a big city. We can't go outside. I'm freaking out. I play Red Dead. I go fishing. And it's so beautiful. I yeah. feel like that's me going outside and it's preventing me from going nuts. And I'm like, hey, if that if that is doing anything to contain your sanity, then more power to you. I get it. I get it. We're getting stir crazy. But uh, yeah, I agree that gaming does have a it does provide a lot of escapism. And I think that's just what the world needs right now. Just somewhere to go, which isn't home. <laughs> yeah. So just out of general curiosity, have you worked on a video game? before like before Red Dead or is this your first experience? No okay the my very first game uh was and I think I had auditioned for a few other games but the the, the first one I booked uh was in uh, the week before Christmas in 2008. Wow. It was Red Dead it was the original Red Dead Redemption. Mm -hmm. Um I had never I I had never worked on a game. Mm -hmm. Um I mean you know, we played a whole bunch of them. So I'm familiar, <laughs> familiar with console games, but yeah, uh, working with Rockstar and working on that first Red Dead game, that was, that was my entrance way into the world of, uh, of, of uh, doing performance capture for a uh, major console game. And it was an amazing experience. Uh, absolutely. So is acting something that you've always always done or is something you've always wanted to do or was there something in your life before you find acting oh i i uh yeah i wanted i pretty much wanted to do either acting or improv comedy since i was in high school it started when i was 16 years old mm -hmm. to uh i went i grew up here in, in i grew up in daytona beach florida mm -hmm. uh which is just like an, an hour or so south of here and uh, I, I mean, I, I was, I've always been a, a taller or, or bigger sized guy. I mean, the size I am now, I kind of hit when I was 15, 16. And, 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 and uh, I, people, you know, my coaches saw that and they, you know, my dad thought he was like, well, he's, he, I was, they didn't know what to do with me. So they got me involved with football. Cause he's like, well, you got to play football. And, and I love watching football and I played the first couple of years, but if my heart wasn't into it yeah. and I'd rather be uh, hamming it up with friends, doing impersonations. Uh, I, I took art classes. I drew, I painted, I did watercolor. And I was, I was kind of just like uh, uh, to my parents, I guess it was like an anomaly because my dad just was trying to figure out, you know, why my artistic side kind of outweighed my athletic side. Um, 
but I, I knew that it was just something that I wanted to, that I wanted to do. And, I, and, and I, I, you know, I, I grew up in high school. It's just like, i never felt comfortable in my, in my own skin because people would see this big guy. They, they thought I'd play sports or whatnot. And I was just kind of more introverted, did this, you know, kind of did the art class thing. Uh, and then, uh, I thought I was going to, I wanted to, to do animation at first. I, I love uh, drawing and painting and, uh, but I did a, um, in the, the big inspiration is just like, I think it came from my dad. My dad loved old school comedies. My dad, you know, never acted in his life, but my dad had a, a wonderful, uh, he had a great penchant for watching be able to watch a comedian and understand timing and and mm -hmm. he would show me you know the you know like com like old comedy records or you no know, stuff he's like you know the bob newhart uh, doing his bit about uh uh abraham lincoln uh or you know a, a gr watching my uncle introducing me to the old like 70s early 80s uh stand-up shows of gallagher with the watermelon or or <laughs> watching uh watching Jack Lemon, you know, watching these great early comics growing, I like watching Mel Brooks movies, watching Monty Python and just, just uh, getting absorbed in the comedy. And, and when I was, when I was in high school in the early nineties, uh, to me, that was the greatest era of SNL. That was you. And it had, it was the largest ensemble. It was Phil Hartman. It was Kevin Nealon. It was Chris Rock. It was Chris Farley, Adam Sandler, David Spade, yes. Rob Schneider, Ellen Cleghorn. Uh, you know, Jan Hooks was there. Uh, you know, Phil Hartman, just like uh, Dennis Miller. Then it went to Kevin Nealon doing the weekend update, Mike Myers and, and uh, Tim Meadows. And all these guys were doing, were just doing the best things. I was a huge Dana Carvey fan. I loved Phil Hartman. Um, I loved Mike Myers comedic timing and his facial expressions. And I started, I, I started getting into impressions at that time. And I, my early impressions were the comedian. It sounded more like when I, if I tried to do George Bush, it sounded exactly like Dana Carvey, Dana Carvey doing George Bush as opposed to directly George Bush. But I was, I was getting the nuances and my dad was <laughs> laughing and my, and, and so every Saturday night, my dad and my sister and I would stay up and watch Saturday Night Live. And that was that was our thing. And it was it was like a, a family bonding thing. But I was also um, it's like a switch went on and I had the attention of both my dad and and, and my sister and my, my sister at that point is four years older than me. She knows what she she knew what she wanted to do when she was young. And, 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 and my, my dad, you know, he, he was a, worked for Lockheed Martin, was a logistics engineer, physics major. Uh, my sister went into financial business and I'm here doing impressions and everyone's like, well, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> where, and, and, and that's just one of those, sometimes the, the family dynamic, that's what happens. And someone's like, well, I don't, he, he, you know, this person is a surgeon. This person is a, 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 you know, a circuit court judge. And this kid's playing the piano, you know, and, yeah. and some, sometimes it's funny how that works out. But uh, I, my dad, I think my dad always wanted to be a writer, but his parents were more strict. So he got pushed into something, which he enjoyed. But mm -hmm. he, I think he appreciated my, my creativity and wanted to um, uh, wanted to help nurture that in a way to see you know if maybe if I was slightly pushed in this direction. My dad was wanting me to be practical, but never tried to. Sh you know, my dad had a very great. I, I give him credit for the balance, mm -hmm. which he still has to this day because he sees my industry decimated by a pandemic. Yeah, and I'm here, and and, and he sees me going through the internal struggles, and he still to this day, offering the best words of advice he, he can give. And I think that's, ex I'm very, that's again, that's why I'm so fortunate. Mm -hmm. um, but so I remember at this time, it's early nineties, I was like a sophomore in high school and my, and there was this talent show and I was on the, and I was still doing sports. I was doing football and I was doing wrestling, 
Um, but I, I, I wasn't the greatest athlete, but I could entertain my teammates by doing voices and stuff. My dad's <laughs> like, uh, I showed him there was a flyer for like a talent show at the high school. And my dad's like, well, what, well, let me hear your impressions. And we had to listen to impressions that he thought were pretty good for a 16 year old kid. He's like, I'll help you write a stand up act around it. My dad helped me, he helped co write <laughs> my first stand up comedy uh, act. And uh, what it was, it, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's probably very nail on the head, very on the nose, but, it, but for the time it was, uh, it was uh, back when Hollywood Park, the, the big, uh, the horse racing track uh, over in, in LA was still open. And uh, it, it, what it was, it was Gilbert Godfrey was, was the cashier and all these celebrities are placing bets. And I'm doing, um, it's the early 90s. So at the time, Jimmy Stewart was still alive, but he was older. And, and, and you know, it was kind of these, these older impressions uh, that people today, young people, they had no idea who they are. But in the early 90s, I could get away with a few of them. Uh, you know, based on on what the guys on SNL were doing, like Phil Hartman would, you know, do something like that. Or so I, I would my litmus test is like, what would what would Dana Carvey, Mike Myers and Phil Hartman and, and some of Kevin Nealon stuff that he'd still be doing that I could get away with. So I did this. I did this thing. And, and half the students, they knew Gilbert Godfrey. Yeah. But they didn't know anyone else, but it didn't matter because they were they were honed in on Gilbert Godfrey. And, and the principal, assistant principal, and all the faculty were laughing at what I was doing because they were adults and they got it. Um, and I remember my dad, uh, I think my dad went to the, there was an in-school performance, which uh, the sound quality was better, but it was a little ratty kids because they used to throw pennies on the stage. I don't think you'd do that anymore. In the 80s and early 90s, they'd still allow that crap. So I had to deal with I had to deal with the last ages of them of the in the in the in school performance of them throwing ch change on that really was I oh needed my God. Um, but I got through it. But my dad but my dad went to the night performance and those same faculty and they're still laughing. I remember afterwards my dad I was like yeah I I think I was getting snickers from he goes doesn't matter all the adults thought it was me. he goes these kids they don't they don't matter. It's, it's like kids don't matter it's the adults that that's you know he's like the, he's like look the adults they're the ones with the money in the end so he's like you want to impress mm -hmm. the adults and i'm laughing uh but i uh yeah so i, I didn't i didn't win because someone some some hot girl doing a lip sync of some garbage one yeah. i don't know i'm sure that she, seems about right because it was one of those it was one of those things. um <laughs> oh god but it was a great experience. And, yeah. uh, and I'll tell the story, but I, uh, I had two guys from my wrestling team that used to pick on me. Mm -hmm. uh, at some points, I'd say bully. Um, yes. But, well, no, it was bully, but they, they just, I don't know, I, you know, it was either pick or something. I was just, that's just how athletics worked at that age um and they were backstage and i just come off and uh uh one of them came up to me and i'll never forget this uh and this 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 individual uh who who had a jerky demeanor um at the time came up to me and he's like hey palmer come here and i walked up to him he goes you know you're one of the worst people on the wrestling team He's like, you suck. And then he stopped and he pointed to the stage. He goes, but that was pretty funny. Wow. That was good. And then he punched me in the arm. He just heard it like prod me right in the arm. Just and the other person that was with him was just kind of like the yes guy. I was like, yeah. And he hit me too. <laughs> like, oh. And they were chuckling, but they looked and they're like, and they walked away. Wow. And I never had problems with them again after that. Because you had the best. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm holding my arm. And I'm like, Jesus, that hurts. 
But that at the time was the biggest compliment I could have gotten out of yeah. those two. And I wasn't going to push it. And I remember walking away and I said to myself, this is what I'm going to do. Wow. And I have been, I have been performing or uh, writing in and around entertainment. I have made entertainment uh, my, my priority ever since. Um, and uh, I, 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 since 16 years of old, 16 years of age, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. And I've had doubts. My goodness, I've had, uh, there had times where I, I certainly have wanted to give up like any actor, but you, you, yeah. you hit those moments. Uh, but then what happens is like, you're, I, I, I said, you're, you are perfectly entitled. You're, you're perfectly allowed to have those moments. And I think you should, I think you should be able to have a healthy way to, to doubt yourself. Don't beat yourself up, but, but, but have, pull yourself aside and, and question the steps you're doing. Are you working hard enough? Are you maybe need to, as Bill would say, work smart? Are you do you know, are you, 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 it's okay to analyze your steps. And I look at, at this, I think that uh, at the end of the day, I, I, I come around uh, in my moments of uh, worst doubt. And I say, no, this is what, this is, I, I don't think there's anything that's going to make me happier. Mm. And then you can at least by the end of the day, go to bed knowing it's like, okay, tomorrow's a new day. Um, but I always look back at, of, of, of high school. And so mm. that happened. I was feeling good. And I'm like, well, I want to get better. So there was uh, in there. It's not that they ripped it down. I, I was driving uh, down, but uh, in a little town called Wilbur by the Sea, between South Daytona and Pond Sinlet, there used to be an um, A1A right on the beach. There used to be down in Wilbur by the Sea. I know that's the name. That was the name of the township. And a nice little area. Uh, there was a big seafood restaurant called Blackbeard's, and Blackbeard's mm -hmm. had a stand-up comedy room in the back. And I was doing stand-up comedy from 16 to 17 in that, and I, and, and I was wow. starting to grow facial hair. I didn't look 16. I looked like I could, I could just be like 2021. 20, <laughs> and, uh, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't get away with getting served beer because they didn't know the difference. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I would, I started to do an, and, and I don't know if there's any, I hope there's not any, uh, footage of my days at Blackbeard's, uh, but, uh, maybe somewhere, uh, but it, it was, it was like a young training ground. I think looking back, I'd be, I'd be so embarrassed. Uh, but I was 16. I, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where I, you had to start somewhere yeah, exactly. and any experience is good. So I, I, I took my lumps, uh, uh, doing, uh, doing stand-up comedy in a bar, this underage kid that no one, uh, or people probably figured I was underage and didn't give a crap. I don't know. Uh, I'm okay now. I got through it. I don't know anyone got arrested, so we're okay. Um, I don't think you can get away with that now, but that, again, this the early nineties is a different time. Um, but that's, you know, that's, that's how I got into it. And then once I graduated high school, I was, I was, uh, I was in the doing plays in the school. I was in the I was in the the, the acting classes. I learned so much uh, from my my teachers at the time. Um, uh, my my uh, my senior. My, and I'll I'll mention by name because they're very. If they ever watch this, I want them to know how influential they were. Um, my my junior acting teacher. Uh, her name was Linda Bonick. And she saw me after that talent show and said, you need to be, you need, why aren't you in the acting program? And it's one of the best thing. It's one of the best things that a teacher ever did to reach out to me. Uh, so uh, Mrs. Bonick, if you're out there, thank you. And then um, my senior year was a different one. It was uh, Reed Conrad. Um, and Reed Conrad was a, huge influence on me and I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for him wow. uh he proved to be a great teacher a great friend a confidant and uh a, a, a beacon to go to when I doubted myself the most um and he 
he and he encouraged me to uh uh to pursue this further and then i and i and i did i i ended up getting a uh a, I, I stayed in town uh i went to a state college for a couple years after high school another great acting teacher uh from daytona state college jim simmons uh uh he was also very influential and i spent i spent a few years with him uh we did we did festival shows i i I learned so much and I eventually transferred to University of South Carolina at Aiken. Uh, and I had, I had amazing professors and teachers at that point. Uh, 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 former uh, head chair and former uh, uh, SETC president, uh, Jack Benjamin, who recently retired. Uh, great, great teachers uh, like uh, Dewey Scott Wiley of the Trustus Theater in uh, Columbia, South Carolina, and the uh, the late beloved uh, Amber Star San uh, Amber Star Taylor Sandifer, and uh, I I I just had these steps where, like I said, there were always times where I was doubting what I was doing, and then at each time, at each step. I had a new mentor. I had a new teacher, and mm-hmm. and and they were needed for that time because every couple of years, you know, going from sixteen to your mid twenties, that is so influential. And things got to, you know, you, every every year and a half or so, you hit this, you hit a different stride, and you you learn something's got to adjust, and you need someone to kind of introduce you into this new crevice or or this this new arena of where you're going. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and I. Uh, yeah, so I had, uh, I had, I had help along the way with great teachers, um, and and uh, I think I think the encouragement uh, during my education is what is why I'm still doing what I'm doing, even though I'm not currently working out because COVID. But I, I think now is is my teacher because it's like there's like a teacher in every step, and I think that uh, someone's well, well, you know who's your teacher now? Yeah. Um, I just think that right now, uh, I, I'm I'm it's just it's just kind of like uh, life 101. I'm getting taught by everything I'm seeing about how other people are treating others in a time of where compassion is needed. Mm-hmm. And uh, in a lot of ways, I, I, I think that I have to, this is the opportunity where all those names I mentioned of great teachers that I've had in the past, um, I'm taking a little bit from everything that they've said about life and about how things can be thrown at you. And I've taken that and it's like, okay, um, you know, you can't, this, this is, this, at some point you have to carry this by yourself and apply this to your life to use other than or other than if you don't, they're just words. Um, and so I think that uh, I, I am where I, I am where I am because of the amazing education that I got in the arts, but they also, because of the, the love and the encouragement of an array of, of people of professionals who believe that I could, I could uh, reach my potential. That's so good. Yeah. Um, so back when Red Dead was out, the original Red Dead, Bill was kind of posted as this kind of evil kind of Billy type. And in part two, oh, yeah. I guess we kind of saw the like softer side of him, like a side of Bill that we've never really seen before. How does that make you feel now that people are playing it and getting to see this other side of Bill that we might not see? I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think it's fantastic. Um, you know, there's not, uh, he doesn't, you know, he's basically, you see him in the original game and, and he's just this, uh, this bearded burly heavy that's just going around and (laughs) screaming obscenities and, uh, and and you, there's, you kind of want to learn more about him, but you don't get, you don't get the chance to, but, Mm -hmm. but that mystery is built up. It's like, well, all I know is, I wonder, I wonder what their days were like before this happened yeah. and what, what, what went down to get this guy so pissed off at John, 
you know, and 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 John doesn't uh, uh, Don, John doesn't suffer fools, and he, there's this great honesty there. So when he first goes to Fort Mercer and he said, you know, Bill, that's not fair. You were as my brother. Um, he has no he has no John Marston in the original game has no problem telling people how how dumb and and, and yeah. Claude headed Bill Williamson is, but at the same time for him to, you know, he does mention he was, he was once like family. And, and, and afterwards, Abigail says that, you know, you know, Jack saw them as uncle Dutch and uncle Bill. And he thought, I was like, well, I, I gotta, I'm so curious to see what the hell happened. Mm -hmm. And that's what Red Dead 2 did. It's like, yeah, we're going to show you what happened. You, you've been asking for 10 years, what the hell happened. Yeah. Well, you want to see? Here's what happened. Yeah, and you still don't it. get to see everything that happened, but you're, you're certainly closer. There's still some pieces. Um, but to go back and answer your question, Kay, um, it was, I didn't know, I didn't know what to expect other than I had, I went in as an actor from, and, and looking back, I didn't have that many scenes as Bill. Um, yeah. He's talked about a lot. And when you see him, it, these are pivotal moments. Um, but that you, you get that he's angry, um, mm -hmm. that he 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 he's hot tempered, uh, and and you get the opportunity. He's like, well, here's you get to spend more time with him. You want to see what he's really yeah. like, and uh, and people did that. The great thing is, though, uh, depending as you as the player, uh, you can or cannot uh, choose to get to know Bill or anyone else that good for, you know, you, if, if you, you could go through the game and not really know who Bill yeah. or Sean or, or Tilly Jackson really are. If you just hitting the missions, you know, keep buying new horses and you never have a conversation yeah. with him. your experience, you do that. Your experience is different from the guy that lives two houses down who is playing like to platinum, 100% completion, doing all this stuff, listening to every conversation. Um, it, it's, it's, it's all, all the information is, is there in the game. That's a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as far as what we worked on, I was amazed as, as an actor that the, the layers that I was, I was able to add uh, and stuff for my own personality. I'm mm -hmm. certainly not like, uh, Bill Williamson, but um, we certainly uh, we're we're two two in, two individuals as different as we are. Uh, we've got a similar, we look similar. We got a similar beard, yeah. uh, but we both uh, we 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 both are uh, in a in a way. Bill is a, in a, in a way, even though he seems so antisocial and to get along, Bill is kind of like a people pleaser. Bill yeah. wants to be accepted. Oh yeah. Uh, and and he just has a very hard time. Uh, uh, he just he's really bad at communicating. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it might be one of the reasons he gets so frustrated at stuff. Uh, but there are times when, in his own way, he does communicate uh, as as befuddled as it comes out. Uh, it's 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 very authentic. When when he does hit a point, you can't you you can't fault him for not being authentic because he when he is able to formulate his truth, uh, that is you are getting uh, pure pure Bill. Uh, it's it's authentic to the core, and uh, and I, I think that's the great thing. And there's a lot of people who feel sympathy for Bill. Um, and I didn't go in. I went in with my, I went in what I knew from the first game, and what the objection of Bill was, and then everything else um, is really up to the great writers at, at Rockstar. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 you know, that's they they wrote some wonderful bits for all of us, and and they certainly have my eternal gratitude because uh, they allowed me to they allowed me to. Uh, do my job as an actor. I was able to, my job was to, to serve them, serve, serve the script they pre, uh, presented. And it worked out 
it worked out great. And I, and people ask me, they're like, my thoughts about Bill is like, I, for all his flaws, all his gaffes, I, I, I love, I love Bill. I put so much heart into him. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you guys worked together obviously for so long. Was there like any on-screen ritual or like on-set rituals that you guys did before you went on set or? Oh, there were, oh my goodness, the rituals. Uh, well, yeah, there, okay, there, there's, <laughs> there's tons of rituals. Uh, everyone, everyone is, we work together. Okay, you understand that. Well, you, I'm sure you do understand this. We work together on and off for about five years. Yeah. In secret. And, and the only people we had to talk about it, it were, were, were each other. And, you know, five years working on something that, you know, most of these four to five season shows that are like on Netflix or on stream, that it's the same amount of time as a streaming, a whole series of a streaming show on mm -hmm. a platform like Netflix or Amazon or Hulu. And uh, that's how much time we spent together. And so um, a lot of people lived uh, in in New York and some of us didn't. Um, uh you know, uh, for, for the, for the whole span of it, myself, uh, Ben Davis, who plays Dutch and, uh, Noshir Dalal, who plays Charles Smith, we were all based in LA, uh, starting off, uh, Al uh Alex McKenna and Penny O'Brien, who played Molly and, uh, and Sadie were in New York, New York, but then they eventually, uh, relocated to LA, but there are some of us that were, uh, that were, you know, going back to forth, uh, going back and forth, staying in hotels and whatnot. But uh, um, I spent the most time, you know, offset because because Ben and I were coming from Los Angeles. We'd stay in the same hotel together. We would uh, our ritual was is we did a thing called whiskey hot tub, where <laughs> the hotel was that had a hot tub. No, no one. Every time we went down, no one was in it. So we get in the hot tub and pour ourselves a drink. And have our sides there. We're going, and and we obviously don't know what you're working on. So we made sure that no one was around. But yeah. we're we're go, we're helping each other get off book in a hot tub drinking, and that was that was our ritual. And 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 uh, and Rob Weedoff has come from Indiana, so sometimes he'd be at the hotel, be the three of us, or be you no know, sheer and be the four of us, and we would just we would just uh, help each other. Um, but it's funny once once we got to. Once we got to, like, once we got to set, you know, and you're waiting in the green room, you got the craft service table, there was a ritual for, there was a ritual for everybody. Everyone had a unique ritual. Uh, one, uh, what Ben Davis would do, Ben is a fanatic when it comes to the New York Times crossword puzzle. And there was a high top table where there was a chair that was notably like, that's Ben's chair. And Ben would go, and that's where Ben would sit, and that's where he would spend. I mean, he would he would get in the care and study, but there's also a lot of there's a lot of lull, it's a lot of downtime. So he'd do the New York Times crossword puzzle. Oh, that's um, so cute. Uh, no sheer is a muscular workhorse, so oh, yeah. he would bring out his he would bring out these like uh, these the exercise stuff and he would just make the, the back part of the green room his gym <laughs> nice. uh, rob would make sure that uh he had enough he had enough cigarettes and uh <laughs> there was enough uh in the fridge there was enough diet coke because the man the man drank diet coke uh he just it just the man he, like just, he loves Diet Coke. So he yeah. would be drinking a cigarette, Diet Coke, go, I mean, everyone had that. Me, I'd be the one, I was the guy that would be looking up YouTube videos. It's like, oh God, do you guys see this? I'd be that guy. Yeah. Uh, or uh, just, uh, you know, or I'd, or I'd take a nap or do something. But uh, uh, Peter Bloomquist, who played Micah, Peter would diligent. Uh, were his his craftsmanship with with 
the, his revolvers and got, he would work on that. He would go into the bathroom and work on it. He would be in front of the coffee machine working on it. And just, that and that's, that's just something um, that, that was something that he did. Mm -hmm. um, and, and all of us, all of us had our, all of us had our unique routine. But it, it's it's I, I looking back I miss that so much I miss I miss going to set everyone getting in, getting there you know you get you get suited up for the performance capture you do the T pose you get what they call rommed up uh, and then once you're there you can uh, you can go about have a cup of coffee get something to eat wait and and everyone everyone was going to routines you know uh, Ben would want help on the crossword puzzle look out I put my YouTube video down. Rob would come over with a Diet Coke, try to figure out this word. Uh, it, it was just, it, it was so much family. I, and just looking back, uh, I, I don't think Pete would stop. He would like be drinking coffee and twirling. It was, it's, it's, it's funny how uh, uh, Sean Haverly, who played Reverend Swanson, he'd always like go in the back couch and he would always like, it's like it's time to pass out. He'd pass out. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's just, it's one of those things where, uh, I, I, like, I can picture in my head what everyone, what everyone was exactly doing. Mm -hmm. And, and we did that for five years. We, yeah. we had our, we had our, uh, everyone had their routines and I miss that. I miss, and it just became this normal thing. It, it, yeah. It'd be weird if they weren't doing everyone had their quirk had their thing yeah. we uh that's what we would do so oh, that's nice yeah. something that i've noticed with not just you but like all through our dead cast is just how nice you are to your fans you're always so kind and generous and courteous and it's just oh. amazing to see so what's it like just having such a close connection with your fans well it, it you know okay it means uh it means a great deal to me that, uh, I mean, all, like I said, all the, uh, most of the fans are, um, are, are, are really good. I mean, there's always an occasion where you get, you get someone who, uh, I haven't, I've maybe happened once, uh, where someone who was just, uh, on social media, someone just being a troll and something. Oh, it's like, don't, mean. don't be mean. Don't, you That's know, we, I, I, you know, and, and no one, no one should be doing that, but all the fans are really supportive of one another which yeah. is important. And, and everyone's really, everyone's really kind. And, and it means, it, it, and I try to, um, cause I grew up, I grew up a geek. I used to work in a comic book shop when I was in high school. And, and, and I used to, I, I, I get the, it's like, I, under, I understand the, the geek culture uh, to a point where I know that when I was, as I explained, you know, when I was in high school, trying to figure out who I was, like all of us getting into acting and try to, trying to figure your way uh, through life and, and, and what you're, who the person you're going to be, what you're going to do. Um, I, you know, I, I, was a, I was a geeky kid working in a comic book shop and I, <laughs> I saw that. I, I, but I, I could see what it could mean. Uh, and to have one of those people that I saw or, or, or the people that they, you know, either a comic book artist or a, 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 an actor in a, a sci-fi franchise, how much I looked up to them. And when I went to conventions in the early days, when I'm just, a, when I was just a kid and, and got to talk to someone and, and how much their words calmed me or made me feel. And I said, that's a very, that's a very powerful thing. Yeah. And it's something that should not be abused. And it's something that, um, if you if you find yourself in that position, it's something you could do good with. So yeah. I, I look at it is um, when I talk to a fan, and, and I've got fans between the ages of fourteen to their mid twenties. Like I'm all ages, but as far as young fans, mm -hmm. and I think of I was I was that I was that age. I felt that insecure. I was trying to figure out what I wanted out of life. Or or or, the, or what I could do to be the best I could be, uh, uh, to to contribute something interesting and unique from my point of view, and who who would I have liked to have come along and give me that 
word of encouragement at the right time. Yes. Which doesn't take anything to do. And by saying that doesn't make it any less sincere. You, you can just take a moment and just be mm -hmm. kind to someone and be encouraging. And, and I look at it that I, 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 I just put myself in the shoes of the fan and I say, you know, if I could have had that someone show up and just, just say the right thing at the right time when I was having a bad day, that would make the world. So that's, that's how yes. I look at it. I, tr I try to be the person I would have gone nuts over if they just showed up for a second for me and just gave me that bit of advice mm -hmm. and then float into the sunset. Uh, yes, but I, I, I uh, and I, I understand how important that is. So I, tr I try to be as honest with my fans and, and open um, as, as I, uh, as healthily open as I, as I can be, um, uh, as, as much as I can be, I guess, is to answer your question. Yeah. So the game's been out for a while now, like both games. Uh, um, like two yeah, years. Um, <laughs> I know, two years. It's, it's, it's wild. <laughs> like, and the response is still outstanding how do you feel about that like it, people are still oh i think it's i i had totally um just a few weeks ago when they had the the thing about that and i posted about it we all did about the steam awards and i was yes. shocked i was like we're still up for awards it came out two I years ago well. <laughs> and they're like well it's from the pc release and then you and then you missed that by a week so they rolled it over and then you were eligible and, then, and i'm like that's fine um i think it, i think it's great i think that uh we made we we had the opportunity. Rockstar made something unique. They they casted uh, actors they thought could best embody characters that were telling a particular story in a, in a, a particular era that had a particular feel to it. Um, it was all these different moving parts that that always have a mathematical possibility of failing, mm -hmm. and they didn't. And something something was made that um, everyone involved believed in. We all believed in it. I think one of the reasons that the entire cast got so along well is not just because we it was just a good chemistry of people, but we're working on something that we we believed in, um, yes. heart, mind, and soul. We we believed in everything we were doing, and we believed in in the the fact that it's frustrating keeping a secret that long, but we were keeping it because we knew, I mean, we're under a, we, you know, we're signed an NDA. It's a contract, yeah. but, but, it, it, and, and that's, that was our job that, that this, you know, we were given a job, we were paid to do a job, couldn't talk about it, but, but the exhilarating thing is, is we got it. We're like, I, I get why they don't want us to talk about it because this is going to blow people's minds in the best way possible. This is going to be <laughs> such an adventure. And we get to say we were part of this, and uh, and we believed we believed in every every little scene with every non playable character, or a, a main mission with a fellow gang member, a camp conversation, an emotional happening, um, an exhilarating exhilarating gunfight, something that everything that we did in every aspect we we believed in telling this great narrative. We were we were storytellers. Mm -hmm. And we got to tell, uh, we were part of telling this great story that uh, an amazing group of writers put their heart, heart and souls into. And, and I think that um, the fans, uh, it's just a testament to the work. The, the fans love the work and we, we equally loved making it for you. And, we, and that was the thing we thought about. This, the fans are going to love this. And they're not even going to, exp we, they have no idea um, what this is going to be about. They love, yeah. they love Red Dead and then says Red Dead 2. And um, it, it, we, we knew that we, as Ben Davis uh, puts it, and, and this is just a great expression, we all stepped into, we all stepped into a great puddle with this <laughs> franchise. And, and, uh, um, so, the, so I, I would say that I, I'm, anyone says what great work it is, I'm still awed by it. And I get to, uh, as someone who, when I have time plays games themselves, 
I can, I can step out and separate myself from my performance and get lost and to see Bill as his character. Yeah. Um, and if I think about it, I guess, yeah, I know where I was, but I, but I can also see it is that I want to, you know, Bill's relationship with other gang members and, and the, the, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, the Red Dead Redemption story is, is uh, it, was a, it, it was a great novel that was put into a gaming console. Yes. Um, and and, and I, I, I'm, I'm humbled and amazed by the, the fans' reaction to it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I just know, I said, well, we did our job. We gave them something that we love doing. And so it makes me happy. It makes me thrilled all, each and every day. Well, you guys did an incredible job. I can't even, from my own personal experience, Red Dead has really given me a lot of tools to be happier. It's given me a good escape and it's obviously got me into doing this. So a huge thank you for that. Before, I only have one question left and it's genuinely, oh, okay. <laughs> what would you, what words would you say to your fans like right now? What would I say to my fans? Uh, I think you guys are the bee's knees. <laughs> now, I would say to my fans <laughs> that uh, uh, I am so I am so glad that my fans love the work that we do. Uh, we are we are ecstatic that you. Um, we are ecstatic, the cast, that, that you fans truly love what, what we contributed. The story that we told you, you were so engaged. And that it, uh, um, I would say this to my fans, um, and this goes, I'll say this on behalf of the entire cast because I know it's true. Um, I have been blessed with so much great uh, uh, creative fan art that uh, is is always a good uh, is always a good talking point among the cast when we have our zoom chats or we we do our little text groups um, that you are uh, you are uh, honoring our our artwork with your own um, in a time where uh, people feel trapped they feel suffocated artistically Mm -hmm. um, which I felt in this time. I, I just thinking about it's like, oh my goodness, I miss I miss going I miss going into uh, a booth to record. I miss being on set. I, I miss I miss live theater. I, I miss that. Um, and, and sometimes it'll drive me nuts. Yeah. And then I'll talk to someone who who is still in LA, but they're away from family. Oh, my parents live in. Minnesota or, or just away and then they tell me you know what uh it'll 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 be here for you when you get back don't rush mm -hmm. back enjoy enjoy the moments you're creating with your family because a lot of people would say I'd give anything to do what you're doing um but in that time of in that time of create creative create creative uh stifledness I guess that I felt as an actor when a fan would uh, like tag me in a uh, in a post. Um, I'll go look. I'll go look. Um, I, I was. I don't mind engaging my fans as long as everyone's being well behaved and civil. That's all I ask. Please be. Please be civil with one another, and be civil with us. Um, you know, we we a lot of us. You know, obviously, people they have their own lives. There does need to be a certain border. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, of protectiveness, um, certain guidelines, but at the same time, we care about our fans and, and I, and, and I like to engage and I do it in, in the most healthy manner. Um, because I see how, what we did, uh, has spawned this, uh, this kind of like, uh, responded artistic culture of, of the fan art and, uh, uh, and it's just, it, it, I just look at that and it, it makes me happy because it's, it's getting my fans through a tough time 
that we're all going through. And, yeah. and it's something that we can, we can share. It's like, yeah, we're all, we're all feeling stifled right now. We're all feeling trapped and I don't want you to, you know, I know what it's like feeling, you know, it's like, I get it. So mm-hmm. if someone's like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting over COVID and I'm here and, and I think I'm going to be better, but I got a little freaked out and I just, all I could do is I got my watercolors out and here's Sadie on her horse. Um, <laughs> here's, uh, here's Dutch uh, with Eagle flies. Here's this picture. And, and I think that's, I think that's great. Yeah. I think that's great. And it's like you, that's, you know, and, and uh, I, I, I think it's, I think it's lovely. And I'm, I'm very humbled that uh, uh, I was part of something that, that people are putting so much attention back into that, that I put five years, or I'd say it was 10 years of my life into, um, which isn't a complaint at all. I would do it. I would do it again. And people ask me, so when's, you know, what about Red Dead 3? I'm like, it's not up to me. It's not, I mean, none of that's up to me. If it happens, and if I ever get asked to come back, I, I would love to. I mean, yeah. they, I've done it twice. It's I haven't had a problem, you know, since. I'd, I'd love to go back. And I'm sure that the the fans would love that too. And in, in the meantime, whether it happens or not, uh, we have uh, we have the shared memories of a of a, a great one two punch of an experience. And I just I I guess I would tell my fans, it's like thank you guys. Um, you know, anything I say is a word of encouragement and your thanks is, is encouragement right back. Um, you know, and, and I feel like as a, I wanted to make people laugh. And, and since I was 16, I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to be a storyteller. I want, and I, and, and that's what, and that's, I, I was blessed. I got to tell one of the best stories ever. And, uh, I, I, I'm very, I'm very happy with that. Very humbled with that. Well, I think you guys did an incredible job. Um, but honestly, uh, we wouldn't be the same if I like a different cast. If they did a Red Dead free, I completely free out every single person in the cast. It would just be like, <laughs> it'd be, I don't even know what to think it would be like. I just don't think it'd be the same. Yeah. And honestly, just thank you for, for joining me today and for taking oh this goodness. time. I will know. This, I, you know, this was, uh, this was a, it, uh, this was a really, this was a really nice uh, interview. Is there anything you wanted to know that I didn't answer? Is there, is there any other questions or? Honestly, no. I think I've, I've covered everything that I wanted to cover, and, <laughs> and it was, it was so much fun. Yeah. You... I'm glad. No, this was uh, Kay. You're very lovely, and uh, I, and, and thank you for uh, reaching out. And uh, I love, I, I love my, uh, I love my cast.